I'd say I totally identify as an early European. I've lived in several countries in Europe, traveled a lot, and met many people from different European countries, and I think there's really a common ground that we have as Europeans. Uh, I, I would say there's a cultural background that's historically been there for, for European people, but I would say in the past generations, and especially ours, that we have always been brought up with this European Union community and this uh, free, like, free traveling in Europe uh, part of things. So I would say, yeah, there's this common ground where people actually go everywhere in Europe and get some cultural points from different countries that you can find in many people and many people from our generation especially. I, I would say probably it's, it's more like a controversial part of, of things, but it's on the bad side, like the, when in 20, uh, 2005 uh, France refused the constitution, it was really kind of a weird moment, cause, especially because we feel European, that uh, we, we would refuse this and there was kind of a breach of trust in Europe. And I think uh, that was a moment where we kind of reflected on what we thought about Europe. And on my side of things, I think this is where I also felt kind of European and kind of shocked that we did this. And um, so I would say, yeah, that's a moment that also stayed and always made me think that, yeah, I actually feel European and that we actually need, the, need this community. I would say uh, that there is kind of a, like there's always this debate between uh, sovereignty of countries and uh, federalism in Europe. And I would say that at some point they had, these two had to be reconciled. And I think at that moment, people didn't kind of, kind of didn't understand that they were compatible. And um, so that's why I would say it was kind of a breach of trust from the French population to Europe and kind of like a message that they, went, they wanted to send through. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say. There was kind of a dichotomy at that point. Uh, between France and Europe and it's kind of the moments where you actually think about what it means to you and, and how you want to make things move forward. I, I mean, at some point I was still young, but um, you actually, like it's in these kinds of moments that you actually think about what it means to you and what you would have done or what like the consequences that it can have. So I, I wouldn't say like it's a, like milestone in my life, but I would say it also it's something that kind of, you know, brought the subject on the table and wants to make you think about what it actually means to you if you agree with what's, what's happening or if you actually disagree and want something more out of it. Uh, in recent history, I would say that the worst moment, and I guess this is a common answer for many people that feel European, but was the Brexit. Um, this is something that really affected me. Uh, I think it's, it's really something that's kind of a shame for Europe. Because um, I think Europe brings so much to countries and I, I believe um, if it hadn't been in partisan, something partisan and with elections around it, maybe the British population would have done something else. And uh, I believe the message was not really pro or remain or leave, it was more about yes or no to David Cameron. And so uh, I believe it, it was kind of a sad thing. Actually, it was not kind of, but it was really sad. And I think that today, the three years of negotiation and, and all, all what's happening right now, and I think it's a bad thing for the UK, and I think it's also a bad thing for Europe because it was, it was really a good thing to have this also different culture and this island that that's really close to us and is part of Europe. Uh, and I think it's kind of a shame to see them leave. Yeah, I would say it affected me personally because I, I was also raised in uh, an English school, so I have a lot of friends from England or Scotland. And, um, and I think it's affected me because uh, I think our generation, most people in the studies so show it voted remain. So I think it's something that was decided not by the people for their own future, but by also people from other generations who actually had something against Europe but are not deciding for the future of the UK but just for their own good. Um, and I think it's super important for our generation uh, to feel European and I believe most of our generation in the UK still feels European and they won't have the luck and the, the chance to actually experience the European Union benefits in the future years.
Well, I would say uh, when the 10 countries joined in 2004, because I was living in the Czech Republic at that point, and so we were joining the, the European Union, and I think it was a really great message uh, after uh, all the separation and the Cold War that actually all European countries actually like built this community together and included these 10 countries that had a different history, uh, especially because of what we were saying earlier on about Europeanity and, and you know, these countries that are, I would say, better with the European Union because they have this economic boost and also uh, their populations have been merged with the rest of Europe and I think it's a great thing that happened. For me personally, I, I would say two answers if I can. I, I would say the first thing is uh, the Schengen, Schengen space. I think it's something wonderful for us Europeans to be able to travel everywhere, uh, to have this, there's no bureaucracy, you can have administrative problems to travel around, and also to work abroad or to really like, it's really easy for us to to go but and I think it's something something very rich for all of us to go and learn abroad from other cultures, uh, to go and visit other countries, to understand um, why this space exists, um, what history it has, um, especially because of all the wars that happened in Europe and now it's really different and it's a continent that's really at peace, so it's great to be able to do that. Uh, so I would say that personally for me, that how it affects me personally in my daily life and then I would say uh, what the EU is doing for me but also for many people is also trying to make Europe greener and having these policies to refuse unhealthy pesticides or to refuse really like um, not climate change compatible um, stuff so I would say yeah that's super important to me and I would say it's something that actually the EU is doing really well so that's great. Following up on what I just said before, I would say uh, it would be amazing if Europe managed to achieve climate neutrality by 2030. I think we're uh, thought leaders on climate change in Europe and it would be an amazing message to send to the world to say that yes, you can be a developed country, you can be a developed space, but actually also think about the environment around you and that doing business, but also caring about the environment for the future generations is something compatible and that's achievable.